Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of finite element analysis. In this session, I am going to start with solving of numericals on finite difference method. The first question, solve the following differential equation by using finite difference method. The equation is given here, y at 0 is given as 0 and y at 1 is given as 0. Find y at 0 0.25, y at 0 0.5 and y at 0 0.75. So I will start. Now the equation that is given to me is y double dash minus 64y plus 10 is equal to 0. I will make a small change in this. I will write y i double dash minus 64y i plus 10 is equal to 0. This is my first equation and this is given to me. I have just added the term i over here because that is what I am going to use. Now by finite difference method we know that y i double dash has a formula y i plus 1 minus twice y i plus y i minus 1 upon h square. For h there is a formula h is equal to b minus a upon n. Now if you look at this question b is given here and a is given here. So I have 1 minus 0 upon 4. I will write here assuming n is equal to 4. Or I would say that I am dividing the problem into 4 equal intervals. So this becomes 1 by 4 for the value of h. Now when I substitute this value in this equation, I can mark this equation as 2. When I substitute h is equal to 1 by 4 in equation 2, we get y i double dash is equal to the numerator remains the same. Denominator becomes 1 by 4 the whole square. Now 1 by 4 whole square is 1 by 16. The number 16 goes to the numerator. So I get 16 by i plus 1 minus 16 to the 32. I am going to multiply 16 with all the terms in the numerator and this becomes 16 by i minus 1. So this is y i double dash which is equation number 3. Now I am going to substitute equation 3 in equation 1. So therefore, I will get 16 y i plus 1 minus 32 y i plus 16 y i minus 1. This is y i double dash. Then I have minus 64 y i plus 10. So here I will write down minus 64 y i plus 10 is equal to 0. Now this term and this term are single term. These two get added here. So I get therefore 16y i plus 1 this becomes minus 96y i plus 16y i minus 1 plus 10 is equal to 0. This is equation number 4. For solving this equation 4 I will assume some iterations. So first we will start with i is equal to 1. Now before that I will just show you something. How did I assume that my n is equal to 4? If you look at the question, I am supposed to find y at these three points and my domain is from 0 to 1. So I will just make a small quick table for you that is x is 0 at this point x is 0 okay and y at this point is also 0 and y at the last point where your sorry when your x is equal to 1 your y is equal to 0. Now suppose if I divide these points before that I will just write down I am supposed to calculate x at 0 0.25, x at 0 0.5 and x at 0 0.75. So this is how I am going to prepare the table. I will first write down the data and then I will write down uh, where I have to find the values. So if I observe the difference here is of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 which means I easily figured out that my h value is going to be 2.5 which is 1 by 4. So from here I get the value of n as 4. Now here I have got these so I will just mark x1, x2, x3 and x4. Here this is y0, y1, y2, y3, y4. 
I need to find these three values and these two are known to me. So this is a table which I should be drawing at the end of the question and then writing down these values. But I am showing you in the middle of the problem because I wanted to tell you how I figured out that n is equal to 4 and also how I am going to decide the number of iterations. That will be dependent on how many unknown are there in the question. If you look carefully, I have 3 unknown here. So I will go for 3 iterations. So let me start with the first iteration. So I write down for i is equal to 1. When I have i is equal to 1, this term will become 16 y2 minus 96 y1 plus 16 y0 plus 10 is equal to 0. This is from equation 4. Now, if you look carefully, I already know the value of y0. y0 is 0. So, I can substitute this value over here and I get therefore 16y2 minus 96y1 is equal to minus 10. So, this I can mark as the first equation. Next, I will write for i is equal to 2. When I have i is equal to 2, this equation will become 16y3 minus 96y2 plus 16y1 is equal to minus 10. Just shifting the 10 on the other side. Now, if you look carefully, y1, y2, y3, all the terms I do not know. So, therefore, I have to find all three of them. 16y1 minus 96y2 plus 16y3 is equal to minus 10. This is my equation number 2. Next, I will write down for i is equal to 3. When I substitute i is equal to 3, I will get therefore 16y4 minus 96y3 plus 16y2 is equal to minus 10. Now again if you observe, I know the value of y4 is 0. So, I will substitute here and I will get therefore this entire term becomes 0. So, I have 16y2 minus 96y3 is equal to minus 10. This is equation number 3. When I solve equation 1, 2 and 3, I will get the value of y1, y2 and y3. So, I get y1 which is y at 0 0.25 as 0 0.1287 y at 0 0.5 as 0 0.147 and y at 0 0.75 I get as 0 0.1287. So, these are the values that I obtained by finite difference method for the differential equation. As you know, FDM is an approximate method which means the answers that I have got as, at these points are approximate ones. I will have to check these answers with the exact method to know if these answers are correct. FEA is a self-check type of a subject wherein you can always check the answers that you get by some or the other method or by some formula so that you know that you have got close and correct answers. Now I have to solve this equation so I will write down exact method. This equation is given. I will write this equation in this format d square y by dx square minus 64y plus 10 is equal to 0. Now I can write down let d by dx as capital D, which is the operator for derivative. So when I write here, I get d square y minus 64y is equal to minus 10, just shifting the 10 on the other side. So now if I take y common, I get d square minus 64, y is a common term, I get minus 10. I mark this as equation number 1. Now this y will have solution in the form of yc plus yp, that is complementary function plus particular integral. So I mark this as equation 2. Next I will write down to find complementary function yc. For finding that, I will have to simply equate this characteristic equation to 0. So, I will write down therefore d square minus 64 is equal to 0. 
which means d square is equal to 64 which means d is equal to plus or minus 8. So this is the value which I obtain. Now here if you look carefully my d is actually 8 comma minus 8. These are the two roots of equation. They are real and unequal type. So therefore my yc will be c1 e raised to 8x plus c2 e raised to minus 8x. This is my equation 3. Next I am going to find the particular integral that is yp. I will write down yp is equal to 1 upon d square minus 64 into minus 10. This is the basic way of writing the particular integral. Now if you look at this carefully, this is the first type which I had shown you that is phi of x here is in the form of x raised to m. Now x raised to m means there has to be some x term which you are not seeing here. It is there x raised to m is x raised to 0 here and any term raised to 0 is 1. So in this 1 which you can see 10 into 1 is this term x raised to 0 which is hidden. Now I will take out minus 64 common. So what remains is 1 minus d square upon 64 and here I will have minus 10. This 10 and 64 can be taken together. So 10 upon 64 and the negative sign obviously gets cancelled out from the numerator and denominator. This term can be taken in the numerator. So I get 1 minus d square upon 64 inverse. You are well versed with the formula 1 minus x inverse. This has a formula 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube and this continues. So if you look at this question now 1 minus x this is entirely x. So the first term will be this is 10 upon 64 1 plus d square upon 64. Now d means derivative. So when I have d square it means the second derivative and hence I can write many other terms. Now why I am stopping here is even this term is not required if you look carefully. When I multiply this term here it becomes 10 upon 64. When I take double derivative of 10 by 64 it is 0. The first derivative itself is 0. So there is no point in writing any more terms further to this. Hence this is the answer and yp is 10 upon 64. I mark this as equation 4. Next, I will substitute equation 3 and 4 in equation 2. So, therefore, y is equal to c1 e raised to 8x plus c2 e raised to minus 8x plus 10 upon 64. This is the entire equation. Now, I need to calculate the value of c1 and c2. For that, I am going to apply boundary conditions. For boundary conditions, I will go back to my question where it is given that y at 0 is 0 and y at 1 is equal to 0. So let me write down applying boundary conditions first one at x equal to 0 y is equal to 0. So when I substitute here therefore 0 is equal to c1 plus c2 plus 10 by 64. So therefore I can write down c1 plus c2 is equal to minus 10 by 64. Let's mark this as equation A. Next, I'll take up the second boundary condition at x equal to 1, y is equal to 0. So when I substitute here, 0 is equal to c1 e raised to 8 into 1 plus c2 e raised to minus 8 into 1 plus 10 by 64. So when I solve this, I'll get therefore 2980.95 C1 plus 0 0.0033 C2 is equal to minus 10 by 64. I'll mark this as equation B. When I solve equation A and B, I'll get C1 as minus 5.24 into 10 raised to minus 5 and C2 I get as minus 0 0.156. So these are the two values which I'll have to substitute in this equation. So let me mark this as equation number 5. When I substitute in equation 5, I'll get therefore y is equal to minus 5.24 into 10 raised to minus 5 
e raised to 8x minus 0 0.156 e raised to minus 8x plus 10 by 64. Now here I need to find y at 0 0.25, y at 0 0.5 and y at 0 0.75. I get these values as 0 0.1347, 0 0.15 and 0 0.1347. So these are the answers obtained by exact solution. Now after this I have to prepare one last table that is when I have x equal to 0, x is 0 0.25, x is 0 0.5 and x is 0 0.75 at these points by using two different methods. First I used the FDM method and then I have used the exact method. So using these two methods I want to know what is the value of y0 y1 y2 y3 y4 here I want to know y at 0 was 0 y at 1 is 0 so here y at 0 0.25 y at 0 0.5 and y at 0 0.75 so I am just going to make a comparative table here so this is the question and these are the values that I have obtained if I compare I can see that by FDM and exact method I am getting close answers though these answers are exact answers which I am supposed to get and these are close to exact method with this I end the session. In the next session we will discuss about another numerical on FDM. I hope you have understood the lecture. If you have any doubts please write to me in the comment section. See you in the next session. Thank you.